بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده ولا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد رسوله تكلمنا بفضل الله ومنع عن شيء من كتاب البيوع نعم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the previous lessons, we took some of the rulings pertaining to the chapter of al buyur transactions, buying and selling. And we said that the base ruling when it comes to buying and selling is that it is permitted. And and if anybody claims that a, a particular transaction is halal, then he is asked to bring the proof, however, with politeness. Or, as we studied, if the transaction contains al gharar wal jahala, which is an ambiguity or a probability or dhulm, oppression, any wrongdoing or a riba, then it is haram. And, and then we spoke about and then we spoke about a particular issue pertaining to inheritance and that is how or what are the rights upon the wealth of a deceased. And then we also spoke about the chapter of Nikah regarding the proposal and also Arkan and Nikah, the pillars of Nikah. And we also spoke about how to reconcile and solve marital problems. And after this we come to the cultivation of children, the tarbiyah of children. So the first step is a parent or the parents looking at them at their own selves. If you want your children to be upright upon the religion, then you have to be the first role model. If the mother wears hijab, the daughter will wear hijab. If the father is always playing on his phone, the children will always want, will also want to play on their phones. However, the, if the father is constantly looking at the mushaf and reciting from the mushaf, then the children will be like this. And also talking to your children and verbally emphasizing to them the, your aqidah, who created us, say Allah created us, who provides for us, say Allah provides for us. Naam. Anas radiyallahu anhu. خدم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر سنين لا تتخيل أن هذا أنا الصغير وما يمكن يصنع خطأ عشر سنين وما قال له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لشيء فعل لما فعلت هذا ولا شيء ترك لما تركت هذا ما هذا الخلق العظيم سبحان الله أنس ابن مالك رضي الله عنه he served the Prophet ﷺ in his household for 10 years. And Anas who was young. And don't think that Anas who he never did anything wrong. However, the Prophet ﷺ, he never rebuked him. And he never said to him in something which he had done, why have you done this? Or something which he had left, why did he not do this? So consider 
the great and exemplary character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. نعم إذا الأب الآباء الآن لا بد يكون عنده حلم على الولد يعني لا يغضب بسرعة يعلمه يربي لماذا نصنع هكذا لماذا نصنع هكذا من رزقنا من علمنا والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يلقن الأولاد سيرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى ينشأ هذا الولد على السيرة نعم النبوية and also the father has to be tolerant and patient over his children and not become angry for every small matter and especially patient in cultivating his child and educating them and verbally talking or teaching them about Islam and emphasizing Al-Islam who created us, Allah created us نعم. who provides for us, Allah provides for us who teaches us, Allah teaches us and also the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam teaching and talking to your children about the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so the young child grows up loving these matters نعم كذلك تأخذ الولد معك إلى الصلاة وتحافظ عليه في المسجد يعني لا وشوش في المسجد عندما تأخذه تجعله بجانبك نعم يصلي and also that you bring your child with you such that he accompanies you in the masjid but then when you are in the masjid that you don't leave him to himself so he goes and plays and causes disruption but you keep him with you so he prays with you نعم يصلي بجانبك then he prays next to you لا بد أن نأمر الأولاد بالصلاة إذا أتم عشر سبع سنين نعم and also we have to order our children with the salah especially when they are seven years old and older تصنع مكان في البيت مخصص هذا مسجد أو مصلى في البيت أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالمساجد أن تكون في الدور لكن هذا مسجد ليس لصلاة الجماعة لا مسجد خاص بالبيت نعم تضع فيه مثلا مصحف بعض الكتب تجتمع مع أولادك نعم زاوية صغيرة ممكن and also that in your houses you have a small room or a portion of a room or a small corner which is like the musalla of your house or the masjid of your house and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he used to encourage people to have masajid within their houses and this doesn't mean the masjid where the congregation is held but a small corner or a small room in which maybe there are some masahif, Quran and you pray salah with your children and you talk to them about Islam يكون مثلا لديك مثلا درس مع زوجتك وأولادك في هذا المكان نعم so for example you have a lesson with your wife or with your children in this area of the house نعم الدعاء تكثر من الدعاء كأن تقول مثلا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا المتقين إماما نعم and also that you make an abundancy of dua like you say oh Allah grant for us from our offspring and our wives those who will bring pleasure to our eyes and make them the aimma of the people of taqwa إذا مات ابن آدم يقول عليه الصلاة والسلام انقطع عمله إلا من ثلاث يعني عملك ينقطع بعد الموت إلا أشياء ثلاثة هذه توصل لك العمل حتى بعد الموت and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that when the child of Adam meaning when a human being passes away all his actions cease except three matters meaning three matters continue as if the reward continues منها ولد صالح يدعو لك and from these three matters is a righteous child who you leave behind supplicating and making dua for you علم ينتفع به and also knowledge which you leave behind which people benefit from يعني أنتم الآن الله نعم عليك مثلا تعرف اللغة الإنجليزية so for example in your situation Allah has blessed you that you know the English language تستطيع طرق كثيرة اليوم للدعوة لله الحمد حتى بغير اللغة الإنجليزية نعم منكم من يعرف أكثر من لغة and there are many ways for you to give دعوة in even other language some of you you know more than only English نعم تستطيع مثلا تنتقي من بعض إذا كنت يعني لا تجيد الترجمة ممكن تنتقي من بعض الكتب الموثوقة 
بعض المقاطع وتأخذها مثلا وتنشرها نعم and even if you're a person and you're not proficient in translating but you can take quotes from some good books from trustworthy books and then send them out and broadcast them أو صدقة جارية ما هي الصدقة الجارية and also in the hadith the third action is a صدقة جارية and what is a صدقة جارية تشتري كتاب that you buy a book أو مصحف or you buy a مصحف وتوقفه and you leave it somewhere for the sake of Allah for people to read نعم تضعه في مدرسة في مسجد نعم في محطة القطار مثلا نعم you leave it in a school or a masjid or a train stop train station هذا علم ينتفع به إلى يوم القيامة and this is you leaving behind knowledge which people will benefit from until يوم القيامة تحفر بئر مثلا and also the digging of wells تبني مسجد or the building of masajid لا تستطيع تبني مسجد كامل ممكن تشارك في بناء مسجد and if you're not able to build a full masjid then having a portion in the building of a masjid المسلم لابد يكون له في كل باب سهم ولو واحد ادخلوا في السلم كافة يعني تأتي بكل شرائع الإسلام لك باب في كفالة اليتيم لك سهم في مسجد لك سهم في حفر بئر في نشر العلم في كذا في كذا كل شعائر الإسلام تحاول أن تصنع فيها ولو شيء يسير نعم A Muslim has to have some efforts in every aspect in every type of good action meaning it's like shooting an arrow at every direction towards every target all the actions of goodness try to have a, sh a small share in it like for example building a masjid looking after the orphan the digging of the wells and spreading knowledge and every great aspect of Islam try to have a small action which is connected to each different area of Al-Islam and Allah subhana said the meaning of which is O oh, people of Islam enter into Islam completely meaning all of Islam try to fulfill and have a share of every part of Islam نعم ذكر المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى أيضا ما يتعلق باللقطة أشياء لا لا يعرف لها مالك أو صاحب نعم and also the prophet صلى الله also the author رحمه الله شيخ عبد الرحمن بن ناصر السعدي in his book he also spoke about the chapter of اللقطة which is stolen items or lost property عفوا lost property تمام اللقطة يقول هي إما حيوان أو غير حيوان نعم so lost property of whose owner is not known is unknown then this is either an animal or something else تمام إذا غلب على الظن أنها ليست لقطة مثال الآن خرج هذا الأخ من المسجد هنا وعندنا صندوق يضع فيه أكرمكم الله المهملات وجد بجانب هذا الصندوق كمبيوتر وتلفاز مثلا مثلا وكرسي وطاولة فهذا غلبة الظن أنها يعني وضعها إنسان لا لا يحتاجها وضعها هنا تأخذها ولا إشكال نعم um, if you think that the, there's a big probability the major probability is that this item is it is not lost for example I'll give you an example if we have somewhere يعني outside uh, a skip in which rubbish is thrown and then by the side of the skip there is a chair and a computer and so that some other commitment uh, some other equipment then in the majority of the cases it's not lost property which has been left there but somebody has placed these items near the side of the skip because they don't need them so this there's no problem with a person taking it <laughs> إنسان حتى يأخذها أي أحد يريد يأخذها يأخذها ما في إشكال نعم so this we understand in our society by our own understanding how we operate that these items have been placed in that area by the owner because he has no problem with anybody picking them up and taking them نعم وهذا يقول أنا خرجت من المسجد الآن 
And if this brother says that I exited from the masjid, and if he says that as I left the masjid, I found the Mercedes of Sheikh Ibrahim and it's ignited and everything's working and the AC is on and, and switched on, is he allowed to take it? And he says, but there's nobody there. أن هذه لها صاحب نعم ما يستطيع أحد أن يأخذها. It's not allowed to take it. He's not allowed to take it. Why? Because we understand in our society how our society thinks that this hasn't been left there for people to take. نعم أو خرج مثلا وجد عند باب المسجد مثلا دراجة هذه ألا بدون الموتور نعم. Or if he exited from the masjid and at the door of the masjid there was a bike which had been left there, a bicycle. لا هذا يغلب على الظن. عرفا أن صاحب هذه الدراجة وضع هنا ودخل يصلي. نعم. Now in the majority of cases, the highest probability is, according to how our society works and thinks and our customs, that it is a person who has left his bike outside the masjid to come and enter and pray in the masjid, and then he's going to get his bike again. لكن هذا وهو يمشي في الطريق وجد في الطريق آيفون ثلاثة عشر. But if a person was walking on the street, and whilst he was walking on the street, he looked down and he found an iPhone 13. نعم. أو قطعة ذهب. Or a small amount of gold. أو وجد مثلا كمبيوتر. Or he found a computer on the street. نعم. أو يعني مثلا وجد ساعة. Or he found a watch. نظارة قلم. Spectacles. A pen. الآن هذه لقطة يغلب على الظن أنها فقدت من إنسان صحيح فقدها إنسان ليس so, لا, لا, لم يضعها هنا هكذا عمدا نعم so these types of items in that this type of scenario this is what we call لقطة this is what the Sharia considers to be a lost item meaning it's not as if the owner has placed the item randomly on the street without or, or, or without a reasoning rather most likely it's a lost item أنا خرجت الآن وأمشي في الطريق وجدت هذا الهاتف. So as I was walking and on the street I found this phone. لا أرفع الهاتف من الأرض لا أمسه بيدي. أفكر قبل رفعه. نعم. It's not permitted for me to touch the phone. It's not permitted for me to lift the phone without me thinking first. أفكر أول شيء هل أستطيع أن أعرف هذا التليفون مدة سنة؟ هجرية كاملة أو لا إذا أستطيع بسم الله أحمل وإلا تتركه أو تبلغ الشرطة yeah. نعم I have to first think that if I take this phone will I be able to publicize or to announce it to the people for a whole year that there is a lost phone in my possession which somebody owns for a whole year if I am able to do so then it is so However, if I am not able to do so, then I leave it or I inform the police, the authorities. مفهوم لا ترفع إلا يقلب على ظنك أن تعرف هذا الهاتف في هذا المكان تقريبا أو المجاور منه مدة سنة هجرية كاملة. نعم. So the ruling is when it comes to lost property or lost items. That it's not allowed for a person to take it into his possession and unless he knows that he's able to announce or advertise this lost item in that locality for a whole hijri year. نعم. لكن الأشياء اللي تجدها في أشياء يعني تقل لها القيمة ما لي ليس لها قيمة كثيرة وما يمكن أن هذا يفقد مثل هذا القلم. ويأتي يبحث عنه إلى مدة سنة ممكن يبحث عن الدقيقة دقيقتين ثم بعد هذا ينسى الموضوع أما يبحث عن هذا القلم سنة لا ما يمكن نعم and this ruling which we mentioned this applies to those items which have a value with the people but there are other items which don't really have a value with the people for example if you found this pen on the street it's not like the owner is going to be searching for this pen for a whole year because it has little value. Perhaps he'll search for it for a couple of minutes and then he will leave it. This is 
واحد سنت عشر سنين وما نسي أن أضعه هنا عند المسجد وكل يوم يأتي للشيخ يقول يا أخي السنت ما رأيته والله فقدته and this brother he says by Allah I know people and they are extremely stingy so much so that even if it was 10 pence and he had left that 10 pence by the side of the masjid every day he's going to be asking for where the 10 pence is and he's going to approach the imam and say Akhi, did you not find that 10 pence which I left at the side of the masjid نقول لا نحن نرجع إلى أوصات الناس نعم so how do we deal with this that these rules apply according to the majority of the people نعم لأنه ممكن شيخ إبراهيم يفقد مثل هذا التليفون ما يبحث عنه أصلا إيش بحاجة هذا الهاتف قال يا عمي اترك اشتري جديد ما مشكلة نعم نعم صحيح أي بعض الناس هكذا because you find some individuals like شيخ إبراهيم for example that even this phone if he lost this phone he wouldn't think about it for two minutes because it's of no value to him so you find people on each side نرجع إلى أوصات الناس والمتعارف عليه بين الناس so نعم. we have to in these cases we consider what is prominent amongst the people and the majority of the cases نعم يعني مثلا وهو يمشي في الطريق مثلا وجد هذا القلم وجد هذه الحلوة كم تساوي لا؟ هذا باوند واحد باوند واحد يعني هذا يبحث عنها سنة لا فهذه الحلوة الخبز القلم ما تقل قيمته إذا غلب على ظنه أنها يعني ليس لها صاحب يأخذها مباشرة ويأكل والحمد لله نعم لا يعرفها سنة so sometimes if you're walking on the street and you find items like for example this pen and this chocolate and the value of both of these together is maybe a pound or even less than a pound. And it doesn't really have a value with the people. It's not like somebody's going to be searching for these items for a whole year. So if غلبت الظن, if the most likely scenario is that this is, has no real value with the people such that they're going to search for it, then a person can take it and eat from it straight away. So if a person says, okay, now at the stall, there's nobody there right now, and this item is there, I'll take it and eat it. هذه علامة وإشارة أن هذا ملك لإنسان ما يتعدى عليه أحد نعم and we reply to such an individual that our society and our practice our custom is that we understand that these items have been placed there because they are pos a possession of somebody and he is selling them even if there was no security guard or anything but we understand according to how our society works and our customs that these are not lost items and this you find in our place and even here for example some of the open markets that there will be a stall and there might be a cloth on the items that cloth is an indicator that these items are the possessions of a particular person so if you find an item and it doesn't really have any value with the people, and again we're talking about the average person out there, a pen or a chocolate or something like this, and it doesn't have real value that somebody's going to go out and search for it, then a person can take it. £5. Does anybody have five pounds? أكبر كم؟ خمسين. بسم الله. ما شاء الله. هذا كم؟ هذا خمسة. كم سعودي؟ yeah. So if a person lost five pounds, would he be searching for the five pounds, the average person for a whole year? In our society, the customs of our society, would somebody search a whole year for five pounds? Perhaps for a minute or two or an hour, a couple of hours, somebody may search for it. So if you find this five pounds, بسم الله 
جزاك الله خير نعم ها هات الله خذ هذه وجد هذه 50 باوند now if a person found 50 pounds هذه الان اكبر ورقه عندنا في هذه البلاد صح نعم هي اكبر ورقه now this is the highest value note in this country the 50 pounds في الوسط عندنا انها يبحث عنها نعم 50 باوند هذه now the نعم. average person if it's 50 pounds he's going to be looking for his 50 pounds تليفون ايباد نعم يبحث عنه similarly a phone or or ايش هو tablet تاباد المهم نعم يبحث عنه نعم ايباد or an ipad a person is going to be searching for it تاخذها وتعرفها سنة now such items which have a value for a person the average person and he's going to be searching for it this if you take it you have to make it known announce it or publicize it for a whole year لكن ممنوع تعرفها في المسجد ما يمكن تاتي في المسجد وتقول اللي اضاع الايفون 13 موجود عند الاخوه هناك في الاداره ما يجوز but it's not allowed for such lost items to be announced in the masjid that whoever's lost an iPhone 13 is in the office and go check out the office. لو دخل الآن واحد المسجد من وجد يا طلاب العلم iPhone 13 تقول لا رده الله عليك. So if a person enters into the masjid and says, has anybody from the students of knowledge here found my iPhone 13? Then it is legislated for you to say, لا رده الله إليك that may Allah not return it back to you. لماذا؟ Why? مساجد ما بنيت لهذا. Because the masajid were not built to advertise lost items. يعني في الخارج هناك ممكن يضع لوحة من فقد هاتف ما يكتب آيفون ثلاثة عشر عليه غلاف كذا وك... لا يقول من فقد هاتف بعدين يسأله أي نوع ماذا في كذا. الخمسين هذه ورقة واحدة أو ورقتين جديدة أو قديمة حتى يعرف أنه هو المالك لها أو لا فإذا جاء صاحب هذا الشيء دفعوا له وإلا بعد سنة يمتلكه بعد سنة يمتلكه نعم But it's permitted for there to be a notice outside the masjid for example and it's just mentioned uh, if somebody's lost a phone come to the office without mentioning all the details and then if somebody comes forward you can ask that person what type of phone was it what color was it what were the uh, characteristics of the phone if a person finds 50 pounds or a mobile phone or an ipad or something which is of value to the average person out there then he takes it and he has to make it known for a year if the owner comes forward and you can test if it's the right owner, then you return it back to the owner. And if the owner does not come forward after a year, then you can take it into your possession. حيوان. And then the second type of items which are lost are animals. Sheikh Ibrahim, Sheikh Ibrahim, whilst he was walking, from Leicester to London, from Leicester to London, from Nelson, he found تأكل. a cow on the path and the cow was eating and he says can I take it ننظر. إذا كانت في مكان يغلب على الظن أنها ها ظلت عن أصحابها يعني ضائعة نعم فهذه هي إيش لقط الآن لكن إذا يغلب على الظن أنت تعرف هذه الحيوانات تخرج ترعى وترجع نعم is he allowed to take this animal we have to look so if the animal is in a place in which we know and we understand through how our society works and our customs that this animal is in a place in which most likely it is lost. أو تموت نعم أو يأكلها الذئب مثلا ضالة نعم مفهوم نعم so we consider this animal in this type of environment environment to be lost meaning either you're going to take it or somebody else is going to take it or it's going to be eaten by a wolf or it's going to die this animal can be taken however if you know that these types of places are frequented by animals who come and they graze and then they themselves they return back 
to the owner then this is not a lost animal نعم اذا كانت تمتنع من صغار السباع يعني عندها قوه تستطيع مثلا تدفع الذئب او كذا مثل الابل هذه تتركها لانها تمشي تستطيع تصبر على الماء وكل شيء لكن مثل البقر والغنم لا لا تستطيع تصبر ياكلها مباشره او تموت نعم فهذه تاخذها نعم تاخذها تعرفها سنه طبعا نعم so if that animal which you consider to be lost in this place if it has the ability to survive and protect itself from small predators like for example an, an, an a, a a camel a camel can walk and survive without water for a long time and can defend itself from some of the smaller predators like a wolf for example then the camel is to be left however however if it is a cow or a sheep and you know that the sheep or the cow cannot protect itself and is easily killed or hunted down by the predator then that animal can be taken if you consider it to be lost however it has to be advertised or announced for a year so the owner can come forward هذا فيه ان اهل الاسلام عندهم امانه لا خيانه والحفاظ على الامانه دين نتقرب به الى الله سبحانه وتعالى ليس من اجل القانون نعم and all of this demonstrates these guidelines and these laws they demonstrate that islam or the people of islam are those people who are trustworthy and they are not people who are treacherous and therefore fulfilling our trusts and safeguarding these trusts we do this due to our religion it's worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning we don't do this due to laws but we do we do this because this is our religion يوجد كاميرات او لا يوجد كاميرات لا يمكن نتعدى على شيء دين نعم whether there are cameras or there are no cameras it does not matter we still have to safeguard these trusts because it is our religion يحدث احيانا هذا معه 50 باوند باوند واعطاها اشترى مثلا ب 20 باوند المفروض هذا يرجع له 30 فارجع له 40 نعم sometimes it occurs that the brother who had 50 pounds and he purchased something with 20 pounds he should receive change of 30 pounds and sometimes the shopkeeper makes a mistake and he gives him 40 pounds in change اذا رجع لهذا وقال هذا زائد وكذا ممكن هذا يسلم if this brother he went back to the shop And he said that you gave me the wrong change. You gave me 40 instead of giving me 30. Perhaps that person will become a Muslim. قبل سنوات كان الحافلة بالنقود تدفع لهذا السائق تدفع عند السائق. فركب يهودي ركب الحافلة رجل يهودي ركب وأعطى هذا السائق بدل أن يعطيه واحد أورو أعطاه اثنين أورو ضعف الأجرة. نعم. A few years ago there was an instance. Uh, there was a bus and you paid the conductor of the bus or the driver of the bus directly and a Yahudi he came onto the bus and the fare was one pound and in one pound and instead of giving one pound he gave the driver two pounds meaning double what he should have paid euro Muslim السائق Muslim باونت يورو ما مشكلة نعم أخذ يفكر السائق هل أرجع له هذا أو لا الزائد وممكن لا يسأل عنه مو يفكر يعني هو يرجع لا يرجع يرجع لا يرجع ممكن يسأل لا يسأل قليلة أو كثيرة نعم. So the driver who was a Muslim he began to think should I return to him the extra euro or don't return to him is he going to ask is he not going to ask does he really care حتى أراد هذا اليهود النزول من الحافل قال تعال يبقى لك واحد عندي خذ And when the Yahudi, when he wanted to descend and get off from the bus, just as he was about to get off from the bus, the driver called him, the Muslim driver, and said, Come, there's one euro that I owe you. And the Jewish man, he accepted Islam. So the driver said to him, Why did you accept Islam now? أبحث عن أمانة أهل الإسلام 
walhamdulillah wajadtaha fik he said because i was searching for this trait of trustworthiness amongst the muslims and now i have found it in you naam kuffar yanzur ilaykum so the non muslims they are looking at you and your behavior bal ahyana al kafir yunkar al muslim qul ant muslim tashab khamr naam sahih and sometimes maybe a non muslim will rebuke a muslim and say you're a muslim and you're drinking alcohol fi al amal huwa ya'rif waqt al salah andama tu as salah qul madha ma tusalli Muslim, أنت لماذا لا تصلي؟ نعم. And sometimes you have a non-Muslim who may rebuke a Muslim for not praying on time at work. That you're a Muslim and you're not praying your prayers. حتى أنا أسمع أن بعض الكفار يحب أن يسكن بجانب المسلمين. ما يريد يسكن بجانب الكفار. صحيح؟ لماذا؟ And I've heard there are certain instances. where non muslims they want and they desire to live next door to muslims and they don't want to live next door to non muslims why is this يقول لان المناطق اللي يسكنها المسلمين ما ياتي فيها الاشباح اشباح عندهم يعني الجن هو ما يقولوا جن يقولوا اشباح يقول يعني اقول نعم ما ادري ايش يقولوا بالانجليزي نعم they say because we've noticed that in the areas where the muslims are residing there aren't any ghosts وايضا يعني ما عندهم المسلمين ازعاج يقول and also in the areas where the muslims live اغاني او رفع صوت there's you know we're not irritated we're not harmed there isn't the raising of voices and music loud music وهم يعرفوا ان اهل الاسلام لا يشربوا الخمر لكن اذا كان جار وكافر وشرب خمر ممكن يعني اخر الليل ياتي يصدم السياره او يدخل بيته نعم ممكن مشاكل and there are no disturbances and they know from muslims that muslims don't drink alcohol and if his neighbor was a non muslim and he'd be drinking alcohol and he comes at later at night and then he's going to cause an accident and cause damage فهم يعرفوا هذا عن الاسلام so those non muslims they know this and they recognize this and recognize this regarding the people of islam يعني ما بقي له على الاسلام الا خطوه واحده Meaning, أنت, أنت meaning there is nothing now which prevents him from accepting Islam except one step and may, maybe you're that step, you're that avenue. نعم. طيب ذكر المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى أيضا كتاب الجنايات يعني الجناية التعدي. Uh, and the author in his book Manhaj al-Salikin he also mentioned the chapter of jinayat and jinayat refers to transgressions meaning crimes that a person transgresses or violates another person by fighting or by injury or cutting ممكن بالسب ممكن بالرم يرمي بشيء يسبه يعني او يتهمه بالسرقه مثلا or perhaps يتهمه بالكفر مثلا or perhaps insulting him or swearing at him or making accusations against him accusations of theft or accusations of kufr نعم كل تعدي على المسلم نعم and all of this it comes under at ta'addi violating the rights and transgression حتى غير المسلم بيننا وبينهم عهد الان ما يمكن نتعدى عليهم and the non muslims as well between us and them is an understanding of peace and so it's not allowed for us to transgress against them and violate their rights نعم <coughs> النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كيف عامل الكفار the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم how did he used to interact with the non muslims بحسن الخلق with good beautiful exemplary manners يقول بعض العلماء لو لم يصنع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مع اعدائه الا انه عامل هؤلاء بحسن الخلق لكفن يكون قضى عليهم قضى عليهم بحسن الخلق يعني عندما عاملهم بحسن الخلق كان هذا اقوى سلاح نعم the pro- the some of the ulama mention that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam if he did not give any if he did not preach to them in any way except they dealt with them in these good manners then these good manners would have been sufficient enough as a call to them نعم الجاريه تصب الماء للسيد والسيد يتوضا نعم the slave girl she is pouring the water for her master whilst the master is making wudu ثم 
سقط الإناء على يد السيد وجرح السيد في يده. And then the glass or the bottle it fell from her hand onto the hand of her master and he was cut because of the glass. خافت منه. And now the slave girl she becomes scared. قالت يا سيدي يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى والكاظمين الغيظ. And she says to her master, Oh my master. Allah mentions it in the Quran regarding those people who control and conceal their anger. قال كظمت غيظي. And then لا أغضب عليك. And then he mentions that I'm controlling my anger. I will not become angry over you. لكن خافت إنه الآن يسكت بعد قليل تؤلم يده أو شيء ينتقم منها. But she's still fearful that perhaps if he continues feeling the pain and the pain becomes worse, maybe he will. قالت ويقول والعافين عن الناس أعفو عني يعني. and then she also said that not only do they conceal their anger but they also pardon and forgive. so forgive me. قال عفوت عنك. and then he mentions I've forgiven you as well. قالت ويقول والله يحب المحسنين. and then she reminds him that Allah says and the meaning of which is and Allah loves those people who do good. قال أنت حرة. And then he says, "You are free." غضبت إيش تصنع؟ إذا غضبت إيش تصنع؟ So if you become angry, how should you react? ماذا تصنع؟ What do you do? تستعيذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Firstly, seek refuge in Allah from the Shaytan the Rajim. تتوضع. Secondly, perform wudu. قائم تجلس. If you're standing, sit down. تذكر الله. Make ذكر of Allah. Remember Allah. لا تبقى في مكان يجعل الغضب ها يزيد في نفسك ونصح النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بعض الصحابة قال له عذني قال لا تغضب and don't remain in that place in which your anger will be uh, incited even further and a man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said to him admonish me and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, La taghdab, do not become angry. قَالَ عِذْنِي قَالَ لَا تَغْضَبْ Then the man said, Advise me, admonish me. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Do not become angry. قَالَ عِذْنِي قَالَ لَا تَغْضَبْ And the man then once requested once more, Advise me, admonish me. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated, Do not become angry. هكذا وصية قليلة لا تغضب. صح؟ نعم. لكن يقول هذا الصحابي فرأيت كل الخير في ترك للغضب كل الخير في ترك الغضب يعني هذه وصية قليلة لكن خير كبير لا تغضب and نعم. consider how small this advice was from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم just don't become angry and then the Sahabi the narrator of the hadith he mentions that I realized afterwards that controlling your anger is the root of all goodness نعم لا تتعدى على أحد لا بالضرب ولا بالسب ولا بالشتم نعم So the Muslim does not transgress and violate other people through fighting or insulting or swearing لكن لا تدع أحد مع مثلا إنسان يضربك تقول اضرب ما في مشكلة لا But at the same time you don't allow a person to beat you or hurt you and you say no problem لا لا تجعل يتعدى عليك ولا تتعدى على أحد. So don't do not allow anybody to transgress against you, but at the same time you don't transgress against others. ثم ذكر رحمه الله الحدود. And then after this the author رحمه الله he mentioned الحدود and these are the penal punishments of Islam. من يقيم الحدود? And who is the one who establishes the punishments of Islam? أي أحد? Is it for any and every person? هذا المسألة ليست لعب. لأنه ممكن واحد يقتل واحد لماذا تقتل؟ قال قمت على الحد كافر And so this isn't the right of any and every individual meaning a person kills another person and if he's asked why did you kill that person he'll say well it was the had which I was establishing upon him وهذا تسمع في بعض الدول قتل قتل ماذا؟ قال كفار And you hear in some of the countries killing and murder and if you ask them why, they say, well, they're non-Muslims. مَا يُقِيمَ الْحَدْ إِلَّا السُّلْطَانِ So the only person who has the right to establish and carry out the punishments is the Sultan, the state. وَلَّا أَصْبَحَتَ الْمَسْأَلَةَ لَعِبَ أَتَخَاصَمْ مَعَ فُلَانَ قَالْ أَقْتُلُ مَا قَالْ كَافِرْ مُرْتَدْ قَالْ كَذَا The state meaning the leader of the state. Otherwise, this becomes play. 
each one killing the other. الذي يقيم الحدود السلطان أو من يوليه السلطان فقط الشرطة مثلا نعم. So the only person who has the exclusive right to establish or to carry out the punishments of Islam is either the state, يعني the ruler of the state, or those who he has given the authority to do so, like for example the. Please ask. نعم. نقف.